So good evening once again, everyone. Thanks for being here. Really do appreciate it. Um, I know there's probably better things to be doing on a Tuesday evening than coming here and listening listening to me. But um, tonight, what we want to what I wanted to talk about is uh, position trading. And I, I get this question a lot. Well, what is position trading? What what does it mean to position trade? And the reason I want to talk about this is I had a conversation with folks, you know, the other day and got a, a surprising response from folks um, with some curiosity about uh, position trading. Now, I have always done some position trading. I don't do everything in position trading. In fact, I, I truly love to swing trade. Um but a position trade is those trades that go just a bit longer. Trades that don't require so much time and effort. Those trades where you can get in and just let the trade work. And you can put together some amazing profits. And I'll tell you this, that the biggest trades, the biggest winning positions I've ever had in trading are position trades. Now, it's kind of the dirty little secret in the industry. Um, brokers want transactions. So they've created all of these fast ways for people to trade. And they've really, really encouraged um, high frequency, you know, trading activity, those that intraday trading. But the truth of the matter is most people who day trade lose money. The brokers, it doesn't bother them. Every time a transaction is made, they make money. So they encourage that activity and they continue to encourage that activity. And what they don't want you to know is that position traders are the ones who make some of the best returns, consistently make money in the market. And, you know, I, I put swing trading in that place. If you have the experience for swing trading, um, there's really great money to be made in swing trading. Um, but if you need just something a little, um, little bit steadier to fill out a portfolio, you might want to consider swing trading. Now, one of the things that I always ask people um, particularly when I'm coaching and doing those kind of things, is what is your lifestyle? You know, we come to trading with this idea that it's a simple way for us to uh, to make money, um, um, add to our retirement or enhance our retirement, um, grow our accounts for retirement. But one of the things that we kind of tend to forget about is that lifestyle. We start trading and then we find ourselves going faster and faster and faster and faster, right? And eventually we end up being glued to a screen all the time. Because we struggled in all these different other forms of trading. And and then we think, think well, the natural thing then is we must, we have to go faster. And... And the honest truth is, is that's not the case. Normally, when you slow down, it becomes easier. And you'll find these charts that put together great trends. Now, the number one thing to remember in position trading is we must have a performing stock. We can't just go pick a stock just because it's low. You know, I've had questions just recently on IN, in Intel. You know, what do you think about Intel? I think Intel still stinks. It's trying to come up off a of bottom, but I think Intel still stinks. It's got a lot of headwind ahead of it. And there's no proof of trend yet. We do have a rally. That's the first part of the trend. But the trend doesn't begin until we get a test and a follow through to actually establish the trend. Then we have something to work with. Okay, and you can see it right over here. It's when we had this higher low that we really started to improve in Intel on this side. 
And so what we're looking for is we're looking for those trains that have already confirmed where they want to go. And this kind of goes back to, um, you know, really one of my primary philosophies in trading. Um, retail traders don't move the market. If we put all of our collective energy as a retail trader behind the market, it would make a tiny little dent in the institutional money out there moving these trades. And so it truly is the institution, there are the institutions that drive the direction of these stocks. Now, you're, there's probably exceptions to that rule. You know, you get into these really tiny stocks and things like that. You might be able to get enough retail traders to really move that that issue. But most of the time in 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 some of your, you know, less than your penny stocks, um, five, six, ten dollars, it really requires that institutional support to really get them going and show a good trend. So what is a position trade? Well, a position trade to me is a trade that I can kind of count on to last multiple weeks, even multiple months, and sometimes multiple years. Now, I'm not talking about um, buy and hold trading, okay? I'm talking about buying a position that's trending, that has a nice, clean, clear trend, entering that position and then managing that longer term chart to a big result. Now, it wasn't all that long ago. Um, folks in right way options saw me close a, a simple position trade. Let me go to a weekly chart here. A position trade in Home Depot that returned to me a $10,000 win. I'm not talking about little money here. I'm talking about really big money. Or how about the Microsoft trade that we took in right way options that we entered right here and it returned to us 99% over that period of time. I'm talking about those really amazing trades that can just go and go and go, and you never know how far they will go. Okay, so is anybody interested in that? And here's one of the reasons I think everyone should be a little bit interested in that. As swing traders, we're often, let's say your account, how many people in um, that swing trade actually have more than 50% of their account in the money at any one time. Yeah, very few people are going to risk 50% of their account into swing trades that are high risk. I've been over at Mike Peterson's place sitting in front of his screen. And this guy is willing to hold 10, 12, 14, 15 plus positions at a time. I've never seen him with 50% of his account in the market. He's taking small positions. And that means there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. So what are you doing with that money? To just setting in cash? Well, what if we could put together something that would allow you to enter some of these trades and just have a small portion of your account allocated to these longer term positions? And I want you to think about this for a second. Let's say you've got five to seven swing trades on. And I know that's a stretch for some folks, having five to seven swing trades is a stretch, right? That's tough to do for some folks. It's just too many. They can't, they're, they're feeling pressure 
around those levels. But let's say you have five to seven of those trades on. If you follow the rules that we talk about, somewhere around three to 4% of your account into any one trade, you're very underinvested in the market. You may feel safer, okay, but you're underinvested in the market. And what happens when you have one of those really bad days? Mike, have you ever had one of those really bad days where all of a sudden you wake up, something happens in the market, and bang, a bunch of positions get stopped out all at once? Anybody had one of those days? And the reason I picked on Mike is because I know he has. <laughs> Just like we all have, right? You have multiple positions on, things seem to be going well. And then, bam, all of a sudden, you take that big hit in the market. Well, imagine if you took that big hit in maybe five to seven trades, but you had three or four or five position trades that had big gains held in them. Doesn't that blunt that blow? Doesn't that help? Overall, if you have those big trades on that provide you that great big cushion. Okay. And the thing is, when you look at a chart like this on Microsoft, is this any harder of a chart to read than a, a daily chart? In fact, in a lot of ways, isn't it easier to read? Because there's less noise. In this move they're easier to identify to clear out all of that clutter and see the nice clear quality trend and I'm going to show you a couple of things here tonight and you, you can see I've removed all indicators and, and things like that on the chart I even want to um, do my best job and not having any drawings <clears throat> on the chart and we want to look at how we can find some of these trades and maybe get into a few of them. Now, a lot of people who think about position trading think, well, I should be able to go out and find five position trades tomorrow. And while that might be possible, that's not likely. Okay, when you're building a portfolio of position trades, they just kind of happen, I guess for the lack of a better word, organically. You're working along in your swing trades and then you identify, wow, look at this beautiful trade setup on this trend. You click on it, a longer term chart, whether it be weekly. I've suggested a lot of folks maybe a three day chart just to give it more time and to remove some of the noise in the trade. And then begin to identify an entry into that longer term position. Now I'm gonna throw on our little Trendinator. Trendinator is the volatility stop wrapped around the 17 EMA. Nothing fancy about this, but it's wonderful in showing us trend. Wonderful in showing us when we're on the right side of a move. Now I'm showing this on a three day chart. And you're probably thinking, yeah, but this guy is just looking at the past. It's going to be one of those trades. All he's going to do is look at those charts in the past. See, could have, could have, should have, would have. But I'm going to show you trades that I've actually done. Trades that I've actually made money on and trades that I'm making money on right now using this method. Everyone here in the room knows that I'm in a trade on AMD from the get-go. I started this trade looking at the weekly chart. I identified this breakthrough. Whoops, that's not the tool I wanted. Give me just a second. There we go. I identified this breakthrough and then this pullback and buyer stepping in, the beginning of a trend. And I picked up a January 2020 option contract, meaning when I bought this, I had more than a year. Well, no, not quite. I had a year's worth of time, just short of a year's worth of time 
on that contract. Now, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if you bought this as a stock trade. Or if you buy it as an option trade. And by the way, my next e-learning class for right-way options, I'm going to be stretching this out a little bit further to talk more about the option side of this. Okay. <clears throat> okay, um, Nini, um, when you hold a stock a long, long time, maybe three years, you really need to divide it by three per year. Um, I'm once again, Nini, I'm not talking about long term holds. I'm talking about position trades. They don't have to be that long. How long have I been in this trade? Since March? How much am I up on this trade? $5,000. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not too tough to take. Having a $5,000 winner since March. Okay, this trade is up 90%. Now I'm using options on this, but it's up 90%. Okay, and it's not that hard to do. Don't overcomplicate this. Now, you can have trades that go long, long periods of time. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you never take profits or never manage the position. Okay, take a look at my trade in Walmart. This is a stock position. My entry into this stock position was here. How many times do you guys should have me show you that pattern? Stock breaks the downtrend, moves through, pulls back, holds support, and buyer step in. Okay, over and over and over. Now, if all you did was hold this period right here, if that is the most that you did, notice that you held for about three months in that trade and you only took it from the 70s up to about the 80s. Anybody have a problem with that? What about catching it here and just taking this run about six months into that trade? Well, no, that's not true. About three, three months into that trade. You remember, these are all weekly candles. Couldn't that be a pretty effective way to make money in a chart? Is just doing those simple moves. Now, what I've done is I've actually held this trade all the way through, and because I've traded options, I sold some of it up here. I bought back in here. I bought options around this trade all the way up. I sold some of the stock position up here, bought some put options on this trade, sold some call options against this trade, managed this down, bought some more Walmart back here, and I told everybody just the, um, today, now that that's broken through, any rest or pullback, I'm looking to add to my Walmart trade. So I'm not talking about never taking profits or moving in and out of a trade. 
because you can see this stock has had some rough road in it. Does anyone have a problem though? How, how excited would you be if the market does some kind of a nasty thing tomorrow, chops out a whole bunch of your short-term swing-term trades, and you've got a trade where you entered at about 71, and it's now at 107? That would be pretty comfortable, right? Now, I'm not talking about a bunch of trades like this. I'm talking about looking in your portfolio and seeing if you can take a small portion. Once again, that three to 4% of your account and finding somewhere between three and five trades that you wanna hold a little bit longer. And you never know which one is going to be the one that really makes you big money. But if you look at that longer term chart, the patterns come out just the same. Now this Trendinator helps you see the trends. I showed this stock this today. Um, <clears throat> in right way. Options, anybody like Shopify? This is a weekly chart on Shopify. Is this chart hard to trade? Yeah, not at all, right? What's our pattern? Break the downtrend. Whoops, the stupid thing changed its tools on me again. Break the downtrend, rally above, hold support, buyers come in. We have a nice little wedge pattern right here for a potential entry into that trade. Here's a great little pop out of the box. Talk about it. Uh, pop out of the box. That's a consolidation of multiple months. All you needed to do was set a couple alerts on a chart like this and wait for that trade. Wait for the downtrends to break. Wait for that trade. Identify these longer term consolidations and wait for the trade. Watch for these pullbacks that happen and put in an alert and wait for the trade. And the thing is, guys, what you're going to find is if you look around, you're going to find these kind of charts everywhere. They've been around us all along. We haven't identified them because we're always trying to catch that hard right edge really fast trade. Anybody have a problem with catching an entry into PayPal? This stupid thing. Sorry guys, it just keeps changing. It'll change colors, it'll change the tool without notice. There we go. Catching this move here and the entry. Moving in this period of time from about $90 to 114. Or how about this move right here? Anybody have trouble identifying that pop out of the box pattern right here? This is a move that lasted the better part of a year. And I want you to look in these weekly candles, just count all the way up to here. How many black candles were there in that run? Very few. That's what I'm talking about as a position trade. Not something that you have to buy and hold forever, but those trades that give you that nice, steady, moving chart, great patterns to start moving this forward. And here's the thing, guys. You never know how far they're going to go. I hear people will, will say all the time, well, the stock's gone up so much, it has to pull back. I'm 
I'm going to show you a trade and show you my old entry into that trade. This is a multi-year break. Here's that big wedge pattern right here in here. There was my entry into that trade. That trade started in 2013. And I got shook out of this trade last year. Okay, mid 80s to 220. And the thing is, I'm not trying to brag about that. Okay, that's not my point in doing this. My, my point in doing this is to show you a different way, a way that you can put together those really big wins and maybe enjoy some of that lifestyle that you would like to enjoy. That time when you thought I would become a trader and I would have the freedom, the lifestyle of a trader. How many of you feel right now as a swing trader, you have the lifestyle of the trader that you thought you were going to have? Because we're always in a rush, right? We're always hurrying, trying to find a, a new trade, taking you know these really quick moves. And, and that's a great thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Some people just, that's what they live for. They love that stuff. Okay. But that lifestyle that a lot of people think about when they when they think about becoming a trader is that tr is that lifestyle where we get to have the freedom to go take your wife to lunch, you know, go play with the dog, take the grandkids out for ice cream, do something other than staring at a computer screen all day long. Right? Wouldn't it be nice to have a few big winners in your account? How many would feel pretty comfortable knowing that in in um, that um, AMD account, you have $5,000 in current profits? In my UAA trade, current profits of over $7,000. In my Walmart trade, current profits of $18,000. Wouldn't that be kind of comfortable? To have those kind of gains setting in your account? And following these trades, and by the way, did did you see anything in Walmart that that was a stellar a, a trade or a stellar chart? Absolutely not. It was nowhere close to being stellar. Um, this, um, take a look at Visa. Visa is a much prettier chart. Can you guys make money on Visa? Is there anybody here that couldn't make money on Visa? Looking at that trade. But here's the thing we do as traders, okay, as swing traders. We're always staring at this hard right edge. We're looking for that little minute move and we're jumping around like, you know, like those little Mexican jumping beans you used to be able to buy and set on your dresser and drive you nuts all night. Click, 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 click. We're always hurrying. We're always rushing. We're always jumping around. But if we could slow that down, just on a few trades, trades that you don't have to micromanage. You know, when you're up $18,000 in a trade like Walmart, how often do you think I would look at that? Do you think I micromanage that and look at every, every little tick or wiggle in that chart not even close 
the more that thing continues to grow, the less I look at it. I just set my stop nice and loose and just let the trade do what it has to do at this point. Okay, I'm talking about account changing trades. Ninety percent gains in three months. Was that a hard trade to identify, see, or even enter? Take a look right now at Cisco. You guys think Cisco might have some opportunity? How about MDLZ? Could you have made some money on MDLZ? And I'm not even talking about picking the perfect entry down in here. Don't even worry about this. That entry right there. Okay, let me talk about the Trendinator for just a second. Now, you see I'm using the 17 EMA wrapped around that Trendinator. Well, it's the volatility stop. If you guys have never seen this, it's a volatility stop indicator set to 10 period 1.5 multiplier. But all I do is wrap it around a 17 exponential moving average. So it's basically a 17 exponential moving average. Now I get this question all the time. Yeah, but well, I want it tight. I need it tighter. That 17 EMA thing is just, come on, it's just too loose. Okay, let's put it on an 8 EMA. I got to go to a different chart for that. Let's put that 17 EMA here on this MDLZ chart. And then let's change this to an 8. Let's make it instead of 17 to 8 EMA. And watch that indicator. Now I'm using a daily chart here to be fair. But if I put it on the 8 exponential, how much did that really change? Is that, is that going to make the difference in your trading? Oh my goodness sakes, I hope not. Now when we look at that indicator, I don't care if you use the 8, I don't care if you use a 17, I don't care if you use a 34, I don't care what you like to use. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's helping you identify the trend and identify entries into a trade. When we break the downtrend, hold it as support and then see those buyers start to pick up from that point or picking up any of these moves, downtrend, breakthrough, move on up, any of those moves for the entry and then just managing this all the way up. How about MasterCard? This is a daily. Can you do this with a daily? You absolutely can, but there's a lot more noise in a daily. Turn that into a three-day chart. You don't, you say, I just can't do the weekly thing. Put on a three-day chart. Anybody like that? Tell me that's hard to make money on. Well, it's funny that you asked that question, Bill, because one of the things is if you did take this chart and went to the hike in Ashy using the same thing, let's go to a hike in Ashy three day. Does that help you? 
See, once you're in the trade, wouldn't the Heiken Ashi help you maybe stay in the trade? Now, don't look at the Heiken Ashi as uh, an entry or exit signal. Signal. I've decided the Heiken Ashi, the best way to use the Heiken Ashi is just as, as an indicator. It's an indicator of trend. Does that help you stop that micromanagement of a position? Just let the trade work, right? Uh, Kim, I, all I'm trying to do is pick a time frame. I don't care if you use a three day or a two day, a five day, pick a time frame and stay with it. If I look at this on this three day and choose to go, I'm gonna go back to my price action chart instead of a three day and look at a five day does that really make that much difference i prefer personally the five day okay i want the weekly chart i want that long trend this stock just never stopped for a year and a half then took about a three month hiatus and then resumed. How many, how far ahead do you have to set a chart to read it? Well, remember when we're using something this simple, didn't I just show you Cisco? <clears throat> Oops. Is that hard to see? You can blow this up like this. Is that hard to find? See, you can find charts, even ETFs. Where you don't have the volatility of a single issue. And do this. I showed this today and showed IYT, which is the transports. Can you guys see any good short trades in here? Fail, rally back to resistance. One week, two week, three weeks, four weeks, full month into that trade. How about swing trade up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine before maybe you got stopped out. Nine weeks. We identify the same patterns that we identify in every trade so it's not like we're changing up everything, right? We want to use the same good quality price patterns that we see all the time in a chart. Same thing. Don't change everything up. Just look for those trades that are doing something good, showing you you're looking through daily charts and you're seeing stocks showing you a nice trend. Good things happening in that stock. Just take a look at the weekly. Oops. Thank you, John. Just take a look at the weekly. What's the weekly show you? Dividends help, but it's not a requirement. What you're going to find is stocks that pay dividends are going to be those older, more relaxed and stodgy old companies um, that are going to give you less volatility in their move. 
PepsiCo. Picking up a train. Sometime here at the end of March, first part of April. That you're still in. Up a huge percentage in a trade like that. Finding those Cisco's. You know, just just do this. With Thinker uh, TC two thousand, it's real easy. I do this all the time. Just go to an index and then click on everything in that index and flip through it. Possible short trade setting up on a long term. Cisco looking good for a, a long term or a position trade entry. Verizon still going sideways. This would be one of those you'd be want to watch this level in here to see if you could find that move sometime in the future. Nothing there to look at or waste time on. How about Apple? Apple breaking back above. Now it needs to prove a hold. Give a little hold in here, just like we did here. Break back through, give a little hold. There's a trade. Multiple months trade. So just look through them. It's not that hard to do because they're cleaner. Anybody think this would have been a killer a short trade? Wish I'd have caught that. Holy cow. Yeah, the th weekly 3-8 trap. Beautiful. How about this entry for a long trade? Better part of three months in that position. That's what I'm talking about. Now, sometimes you're going to find that trade like the Visa or MasterCard, and it just keeps going. But they don't have to. And what I'm trying to show you here is it's not that hard to find them. Imagine just entering this right after this downtrend break right in here. You're picking this up at somewhere around 180, and it's at 200. A 20 point move in that trade. If you only want long trades, let's just flip through quick. Anybody think PNG had some potential in it? Maybe still has potential in it. Not that hard to identify, right? How about Merck? Johnson & Johnson, break this downtrend. Get above, maybe something there. It may take a long time. I actually traded a J&J &J trade back here. This is a multi-year breakout. I can show you the exact entry on this. The multi-year breakout. And if you zoom in right in here, I want you to notice that there was about four months in here on that trade. I can't get there. <laughs> can't get there from here. Just a second. <laughs> oh, got it. I'll get there. There we go. Almost a four-month period without one black candle. Is this making some sense to any of you guys? Now, I'm not trying to change you or tell you that you shouldn't be, um, you know, swing trading at all. That position trading is, is the savior, the thing that you've been looking for forever. I don't know that. What I do know is it's really wonderful to catch those trades once in a while that are showing that long-term potential that trade that you can get in and the thing just goes and goes and goes and they're easy to manage and having three to five of those in your portfolio really softens the blow of this weird market that we're in right now with all the whips and the fits and starts because you're in trades that have great overall profits in them okay jp morgan 
Breakthrough pulling back to test support. Could this be that next long-term trade for you? <clears throat> Intel, I keep thinking could set up for a great long-term short. Home Depot. Anybody see the opportunity here? Up, pull back, up, pull back, up. We have to deal with this price resistance up here. But isn't this trend exactly what we want to see in a chart? Maybe catch that next entry into this trade and see if that breaks through. TXN. TXN breaking back above. Probably needs a little rest or a pullback in here. You know, it's just like right down here. Broke above and then head to rest. Then it goes. Break above, catch a rest, go. Well, when I do the RWO class, I'll talk a lot more about this. But it really comes down to your account allocation. How much cash do you have available to do these trades? Um, if, you, if you choose to buy the stock, there's no problem with doing that. If it's going to be some real expensive stock or something, you're probably still going to buy that option. And just like with the AMD trade, Okay, I just looked at the option chains. I looked to see where there was good activity in the options. And I ended up on the January 2020 options. Now I started my trade with options just so you give you guys a little primer on this. I started this trade with the 20 strike calls. You guys remember when I called that one? It'll be in the app when that was done back in March. And I picked the 20, 20, 20 strike calls. Can you guys see that there was 32,000 contracts being traded in there? Do I have liquidity in that? All kinds of liquidity, right? Not a problem with that trade. The stock moved up really big. So what I did is I sold the 20 strike contract and then I bought the 25 contract. I put $3,000 in the bank doing that. Now when I bought the 25 strike contract, it was down here in the 70 deltas. I've made another 2,000 on that 25 strike. Could I sell the 25 strike and now buy a 28 strike and put some money in the bank? Yeah. I didn't say anything that you can't take profits in this, right? You can take profits and stay in the trade and keep making money. <clears throat> so you can choose one or the other. It really makes no difference. It just has to fit your account allocation for your trades. All right. Makes no difference. Now, I know because I got the email, somebody when I called this trade, well, why would you be taking this trade? There's resistance up here. 
All right, guys, that's something we really have to get over. Okay, why am I trading this trade? Because the stock recovers. Get rid of this. The stock recovers, holds support, proves buyers. So I get in the trade. I have the beginnings of a trend, a resumption of the trend after this pullback. So do I worry about those resistance levels? Of course I do. But I don't let that prevent me from entering the trade. Okay, I enter the position because I planned the trade with a low risk on the trade. I know my risk in this is low. If I get stopped out here, very little risk. That's why I enter the trade. I have the pattern. I have a low risk entry into the trade. If the trend is going to hold, this is going to break. And guess what? It broke. Now there's no guarantee that it'll stay broken, that it'll hold up there, but it broke. I'm up 90% between here and here. That's right, I made money before it hit the resistance. Okay, so what I'm hoping is you guys will take a look at a chart like this and get a, a new a new way to look at that chart and a new way that you can maybe pull some really big trades off. And those really big account changing trades that kind of cushion the blow of your swing trading and give you that, that next little tool in your toolbox where you don't have to do just all really short term trades. You know, back before Rick talked me into doing this with, with right way options, um, I, I really had the lifestyle that I wanted. I, I, I seriously, he, he had to work on me for a long time before I decided to do this because I was giving up that lifestyle that I had where I could turn on my computer, find my trade, shut off my computer and I'm gone. Have you guys ever noticed when I do, do an intraday trade, on a 15 minute chart, I don't sit there and watch it. You guys ever notice that? I'll put on that 15 minute day trade, set the stop loss, and then I look at something else. Because if I sit and stare at that, that chart, what happens? It builds pressure, right? The other day I, I showed a, an intraday trade. I traded it right in front of the, everybody. The trade was up about 20%. I just put on a trailing stop and then I stopped looking at it altogether. I was done. Let the trailing stop take me out. You see, if you're spending your whole day, and, and, I, and I run into this a lot, I do a lot of trade coaching, you guys, a lot of trade coaching, I run into these problems a lot. People tell me, well, I'm not comfortable with more than two to three trades at a time. And then they spend their entire day watching those two or three trades wiggle around. Now, how productive is that? How many of you, if you work for my trading firm, how many of you think you would have a job if that's what you did for the whole day? Set and watch two or three candles wiggle around. It's not productive, right? It messes with your emotion. So how do you avoid doing that? Find the trade and plan the trade. 
I'm going to enter this position here. I know my risk is here. Is that acceptable? Yes or no? That's the question you got to answer. Yes or no? Is that an acceptable risk? If the answer is yes, put the trade on, set the stop loss, and quit fussing with it. Don't micromanage that. Let the trade work. We know every trade has the possibility of losing. It is not going to improve the odds of that trade by us staring at it. I guarantee you, the odds of the trade will not improve if we sit there and stare at that candle wiggling around. We're wasting our time. Yes, you'll start to second guess. You'll start to micromanage. Here's the worst thing you can do. Let's change the time frame of the chart. Well, maybe I maybe if I tweak, maybe if I go to a 15 minute chart, I can I can nail this entry. And then you miss the trade altogether. Anybody ever done that? Wait around and wait around and wait around for a potential trade and then miss it altogether because you're mucking around with everything instead of just taking the trade. I have. How many of you have ever practiced in a paper trade account? I had someone in coaching today and, and they said <laughs> they were so frustrated. They were so frustrated because they would put trades on in a paper trade account and they made money. And then they'd put trades on in the live account and they lost money. What does that tell you? I just asked the question, well, in the paper trade account, were you watching that all day long? Well, no. In that paper trade account, did you even watch it every day? Well, sometimes not. See, if you put on a good entry trade and just let the trade work, you have great odds of that potential trade working out. You just got to give it the time. You've got to stop micromanaging it. It's any time frame that you trade. I've actually had people that I've worked with before that will put on the same trade in a personal account and this, the exact same trade in a paper trade account, lose in the personal account, make money in the paper trade account. Because of the pressure, because they micromanaged. Because they sat there all day long and watched that candle wiggle around. Right? When you put on a, a position trade, you set up that trade, set the stop loss, what should your next thought be? To sit there and watch that? No, your next thought should be, where's the next trade? Yeah, or go play golf. That's right. So do the job. Look for the next trade. If your portfolio is full, go play golf. Set your stop losses and let the trade work. Okay. Now people will say, yeah, but this just doesn't work. This just doesn't work in a volatile market like this. It just, it just doesn't work. Well, then how did I make 90% on AMD in that same time frame? It does work. How many times have you seen AMD in the news? 
just recently it's been in the news because of their new chips <laughs> but it's not one of those companies that's in the news all the time right I usually look for those old, boring companies for these kind of trades that have great institutional support that are always going to have great institutional support. And look for the entries into the trade. And then let the trade work. Put on three to five of those. You never know how far they're going, going to go. You never know how far they're going to go. You guys get something out of that? Don't micromanage. You can exit on a profit target, Rick. You can, I showed you how I did it with that option trade on AMD. I just rolled up, rolled up and rolled out the option. Sold one, bought one. In the same transaction, by the way, sell one, buy one. That's what you call a roll. And, and stay with that position. Stock swings up a bunch. You have a great big profit in the trade. Let's say you've got, I don't know, you jump in this trade. Stock just moves up. Great. Right up in here someplace, you've got 50% winner in the trade. Sell half of it. Sell 75% of it. And see what the rest will do. And then if that stock pulls back and finds support and shows more signs of buying, buy here, move up, sell some of it. Stock consolidates, starts back up, buy some more of it. Doesn't mean that you can't move in and out or take profits on these trades. Just follow that big trend. Okay. Just follow that big trend. I think Cisco has one of those potentials. I think Procter & Gamble has one of those potentials. I think Microsoft, after a pullback or a little rest here, has one of those potentials. Showing up right now, I think Disney after it completes this consolidation up here, has one of those potentials. Guys, they're all over the place. But we've not looked at them because we're always focused on this hard right edge, that really quick trade. But if we just settle down a little bit, look at that picture a little bit differently, you know, people trying to flip in and out of, of, of McDonald's here. McDonald's had that great move up on the daily and then ripped it out and now started back up and we're trying to whip it and trying to trade around this big whip in here. Put it on that chart. Now, when you put it on this chart and you end up buying this trade maybe in here or maybe in here, do you care that you had that little one day whip in here that made that little wowie in the chart? You're up $30 a share on that trade. You go, yeah, whatever. And let it work. I hope that made sense tonight. I hope you got something out of this. The sideways pullback or or the the pullback opportunity, I think. You know, Bill, if you if you go through and in fact you know this intuitively. Because what's one of the first things you learned about charting? One of the first things you learned about charting is the peak and valley pattern. 
right? It's the most common pattern in the stock market. So you combine that pattern that's responding to a trend and you've got all the tools that you need to make good money in the market. Stock breaks above the red, the red vol. Consolidates over here. We look for our entry into this trade. Maybe it was here, maybe it was here. We make money. Stock pulls back, finds the support. Buyers step back in. We make money. We notice that this is in a downtrend. Stock breaks its downtrend here. A little wedge pattern. Buyers step in. We make money. Or not all the way up. This consolidates, put in, puts in a weekly pop out of the box pattern. Nice little tight consolidation. We buy that trade. Likely going to make money. So the only thing that I've done with that peak and valley pattern is just add it, add it in. We always have the trend. Just those sideways consolidations that happen in every chart. So there's your peak and valley, just throwing in the sideways pattern. From time to time, we get more of a consolidation in the trade. Take a look at that Shopify. Shopify. There's that little consolidation right there. Nice little box around it. Moving back to trend. Right? Take a look at SMH. SMH. There's that little box. Moving over to trend. Let's pull it back when it was really trend. Or not. I get the wrong ticker. SMH. Okay. Here's our PBO opportunities. There's a nice little platform consolidation right there. Bit of a platform consolidation right here. There's one, two, three, four candles right there. Nice tight consolidation and then the entry signal. Those are the most common patterns in the market. And if you can learn to identify them and see them, and I think just a simple chart like this, black and white candles, simple one indicator chart. Okay, you don't need a whole bunch of things to identify this. Okay, just that simple, simple look at that chart and we can see those patterns in here. Nice little tight consolidation, consolidation move. Downtrend break right here. Right there, there's that downtrend break. Nice little consolidation right there. Nice little consolidation right here. Just follow the trend. Lulu. Lulu long term. Yeah, possible. Certainly looks like it to me. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Bianca. Good catch on that. I didn't look up. And by the way, there's that pattern again. Isn't it amazing? Wendy's, this one, a lot of volatility in this. Yes, this is trending, this is up. 
trying to get this little pullback if you're looking for a trade in this just notice how this is just back and forth back and forth back and forth now it may settle down now that it has um now that it has broke through this resistance area held it and started up it may settle down So, you know, just take your time and look at some of these charts, guys. You know, we could we could spend all night just looking at your picks. It's not going to change the patterns. You see the entry in here is not here. The entry in this trade was here. And let me let me cover this. How do you find those trades? Take Cisco for example. Am I going to come to Cisco and look for this trade over and over and over and over and trying to catch this? No, I find this pattern forming, developing, and I'm going to set an alert on the chart. Okay, draw a line. Say break above there. I want to know about it. Set an alert and let the trade come to you. I do that all the time. You guys see me do that all the time. I have all kinds of alerts on charts, short term, long term, mid term. I'm looking at those patterns. I'm setting the alerts. I'm waiting for the trade. Whoops. Waiting for those trades to set up. So in this trade, all I see is a run, right? There's no real pullback in this. Oh, this is the tool. There's no real pullback in this. There's nothing in here that tells me that there's anything great going on here. It's just running. Okay, so now I have to wait for the next entry into the trade. Or go to a shorter term and try to find an entry, but I have to wait, just like you would anything else, wait for the pattern to develop. MYL. Wow. I don't know what you're looking at there, Teresa, but holy shnikes. Yeah, definitely bear trend. It's way oversold here. There's no way I could short this. I would be chasing it to short it. There's no way I can be long this. There's no long pattern. So and the short trades are always up here. There's your short trade. 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 There's your one long trade in here. All of these are short trades. This down here is a, a no man. A, I mean, it's a no trade zone for me. It's already oversold on the short term. Needs a rally back to resistance for a short trade. CI long. Does that look like a long pattern? Maybe you're looking at some different time frame. Or, you know, we're talking about position trading here. But does that look like a long trade setup? The so long trade setup is here. This is an oversold short rallying back to resistance where it could set up another short. No trade. 
it's isn't isn't this indicator pretty clear where the uptrend begins and where the downtrend begins uptrend begins when we break across and hold it as support buyer step in downtrend can, begins when we sell it off rally back to resistance and seller step in downtrend doesn't turn into an uptrend until we cross back over prove support and buyer step in right so we'll just wait for the pattern don't try to predict the bottom do any of that messy stuff we don't have to do that and, and honestly guys that's not our job if you're always trying to be the hero picking bottoms and picking tops guess what happens you're gonna get clubbed like a baby seal that's what the market does right It takes those traders that are trying to be superheroes and be super traders and catch all the perfect entries and it's going to club you. And it's going to take your money. Just imagine that big vacuum cleaner stuck in your pocket, sucking the money out of there. If you play that game. Okay. You know, I've been asked this question so many times. And and I don't I don't know how many times I how many ways I can answer this question. Johnny, it it's maybe you just got here. I don't know. But I've been standing here talking for an hour and 15 minutes on position trading and you ask if Nvidia is a long trade. What did I just show you about a short setup? The short setup is failing down through this indicator rallying back to resistance for the next potential short setup. How will we know if it's going to be a long? It crosses back. Wow. <laughs> Got to go back a ways. It crosses back over its downtrend, proves to hold its support and buyer step in. That's how we know. Okay. Even if I take NVIDIA to a daily chart. Stupid. Even if I take NVIDIA to a daily chart, do we have, this is a daily, do we have a long trade set up here? There's your answer. Now, if we go even shorter term, you go to a four hour chart. Did we do we have a long trade set up here on a four hour chart? Maybe. We need a buy signal, right? So if you want to trade Nvidia, maybe you want to wait for the four hour entry. All you got to do is set an alert, pop up through there. Look for the four hour entry into the trade, then manage it by the four hour. But until you see that setup occur, don't try to make something out of, you know, one of the most painful lessons that, and it took me forever to do this, to figure this out, is this whole idea of predicting bottoms and trying to pick bottoms. I used to go with the idea that a stock like NVIDIA, it's down this far, it has to be a good buy, right? Just because it's down. It has to be a good buy. But guys, that's not true. 
how many great companies have we seen just go down and down and down and down and down? Yeah, Sears being one, <laughs> Enron, WorldCom. Heck, take a look at Microsoft. How many years did nobody care about Microsoft? Nobody cared about Microsoft. So just because a stock is down doesn't mean it's a buy. Wait for the trade to set up. So on NVIDIA, if you want to be a swing trader on this trade, on the weekly chart, there is no entry for this trade. As a matter of fact, on the daily chart, all we need is a failure to set up a short trade, right? Give me a failure here, and this is a short. The same as it was right up here. Yeah, that's right. Pick bottoms, you get smelly fingers. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get the girls, are you? Jen, did you look do you ever like guys that were always picking their bottom? <laughs> See what I mean? That's a no winner. That's right. It's a non it's it's a non winner. Let the institutions pick the bottom. Let the institutions decide when this stock is done going down, and they will. They'll make the decision. And then all we have to do is wait for it to come back. Wait for it to cross back over. Wait for that trade signal to set up. So all you got to do is wait for it. Yeah, kind of a bad practice, bad habit. Right? What do you guys think of STZ? It's kind of a maybe, isn't it? Crossed up, crossed down, crossed back up. I think it needs a little bit of a rest or consolidation or pull back into here and then show me a signal. Then STZ might have some upside in it. That big black candle, yeah, it's a little gives you a little pause, right? Doesn't it? So would it be okay though if this rested out here? Maybe a consolidation three, four, five weeks. Then maybe, right? Give me a buy signal out of that. Okay. And even if you don't catch this next trade, what if that does do that and you don't take this trade, you wait and catch it over here? Does that matter? Probably still has weeks and weeks and weeks of upside in it if that happens. See there, break above, one, two, three weeks, sideways or pulling back, and then we start the move. Wherever you think the entry would be, 
I always look for those entries. Okay. Here, let me just use this chart. I always look for those entries where I can have a low risk on the trade. If you're going to buy this candle here, let's say you buy it completely at the top. Is this a low risk entry where there's stop loss under here? Looks like a pretty low risk entry to me. May not be to you. Maybe it's this one up here. Maybe you capture an alert across right here. Just put an alert on the chart where you would like to enter. You see this nice pattern setting up. Gets a couple weeks of sideways move, set an alert up there. Catch that entry, your stop loss is right under here. That's a tighter entry. See this nice price consolidation in here, place an alert on it. Stock pops through there. Can you get a low risk entry on that trade? So look for these patterns as they're setting up. Wait for them. And you guys see me do that all the time. Um, the daily charts that... <laughs> um, that I show every day... Um, let me go back to my normal pattern um, on here. I, I said, how, how many times have I mentioned Shopify as a potential trade? One of the, one of the members said, well, you've only, the only thing you haven't done is bang on the table or something like that to, to warn us about this trade. Well, can you see? Why does it depend on how fast it pops? If you're looking through your watch list of good trending charts and placing alerts, you tell, you're telling me that that many days in consolidation, you can't place an alert and catch that trade? We did it in something as old, boring, and dumb as Coca-Cola. There was the alert. I told everybody this morning, on this gap up, pop, buy that stock. I waited for it to pull up and then pull back, buy the stock. Tons of people in right way options made a 30% plus return on that trade. Why? Because I was prepared for it. Okay, let's see if shop's got a pattern right now. Shop's start, starting to consolidate. There is a possibility that shop could pull back still or just go sideways coming over to its trend, right? So this could have more than a week of consolidation just like here. Just moving back to its trend, moving back to its trend, moving back to its trend, moving back to its trend. So could you set an alert up here just in case it happens to pop early? Sure, set an alert. Find that place where you want to see that alert process, okay? Just keep in mind that when you move this chart away from its trend, okay, you can get these pops like this and see how that separated it from its trend and then it still has to come back to trend. You catch that early entry in here, it pops, and then it does this, still coming back into its trend. So just find the price pattern and set the alert. Roku, anybody like where my alert set? How hard is that to do? Take seconds to do. Identify the pattern, identify the trend, set the alert. Wait for the trade to come to you.
Anybody like where my alert's set for AIG? Waiting for the trade. Walter's got one just like it. Nice. That's our job as traders is to look at those charts. Look at those patterns, prepare for those trades. And it doesn't matter if it's on a daily chart or on a weekly chart. The patterns are still here. Could this have been alert right here to enter this trade? Oh, yeah. Or this alert right here. That's already on the chart to enter the trade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's those little pink lines. I and Anytime you see these pink lines on my chart, that's an alert. I do that so everyone looking at my charts can see them. Yeah, AIG, who knows? We've got a major resistance in here, in that chart. But what I'm looking at on this daily is that we are trending, even though we have this resistance to deal with. So this may not be the trade that really breaks this out. But who knows, it could be the breakout move and then we pull back rest, prove to hold up here and then continue higher. I don't know. I know I find this pattern all the time and it works out. You guys remember this trade? I was looking at weekly charts, told everyone about this big breakout right here. Long before it happened. See that big breakout? Rising lows. Let me zoom that up and show you where the alert for the trade was. Right there. Not hard to identify, but we have to look for the price pattern. Stop looking at just the hard right edge. By the way, who thinks Lily's got some bad days ahead of it? <laughs> oh, is that right, Bob? And really, there's nothing hard about that, right? It was just looking, I'm, the way I found that is I was looking at the, the weekly chart. I saw that big pattern developing. Could this have been a long-term entry with that same alert? Yeah. Six-month trade. Okay, so in conclusion, I've been concluding here for half an hour. <laughs> in conclusion, <laughs> everyone maybe start thinking about looking at some of those longer term charts and maybe seeing if some of those bigger price, one of those bigger trades is setting up. That place where you can really make some serious money in these charts and if we just take the time we can find those patterns 
potentially building themselves right now. We just have to look for them and, and then get used to identifying that same price pattern that we look for over and over and over in a trade to enter that position and take that trade right on up. Um, I'm telling you guys, um, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a liberating experience to have three, four, five trades on that are holding really good profits because you just put on that longer term trade and let the trade work. It changes, it changes your trading. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a great evening. I appreciate it a bunch. See you right back here. Hey, is there anyone in here right now that's just visiting? Hey guys, you can watch this replay. You can... Um, see get lots of free training just go over here to my youtube channel and subscribe to my youtube to channel every single morning before the market opens i do a morning market prep video okay and in that video um i go over the market conditions and things like that and it's all free plus there's there's almost 600 videos here now on the channel and it's all free to you guys just go subscribe and click that bell icon when you click the subscription button click that bell icon so that you're notified when one of these videos pops in there so you can go watch that video i i probably won't get this loaded up um to, well i know i won't get it loaded up tonight maybe tomorrow i have to do a little bit of editing on it um that kind of thing but I'll, I'll have it up on the website here, or, or I mean on the YouTube channel sometime later um, uh, this week. Okay, all that information over there is free. Take advantage of that. Follow along with what we're doing. Um, I truly appreciate it. So thank you guys for being here tonight. Thanks for the new folks uh, coming by, checking us out. Do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Have a great evening. And we'll see you all bright and early tomorrow morning. I'll be back here at my desk at 5 a.m. Putting together the morning market prep video and the morning blog. Everyone take care. Have a great one.